Hey Yaki Gang, Yaki Dirty Guy here and today I wanted to show you guys how to break down whole chicken. So I learned this method to help me with my Yaki Dirty. However, for anyone out there who cooks, I definitely recommend learning how to break down a whole chicken. It's just a very valuable skill set to have in the kitchen. Buying a whole chicken, it's gonna end up being much more economical than buying the individual parts. Now you might think it's a lot of work, but with practice, you can break down a whole chicken in a few minutes. So it's a very useful skill to just start practicing right now. Also, what's more important for me is when I buy a whole chicken I can guarantee that it's gonna taste better because it's gonna be fresher and the reason for that is anytime chicken is cut and exposed to air it's gonna oxidize and it's gonna lose its freshness it's gonna lose its juices and flavors over time so if you were to buy let's say a packaged chicken thighs or chicken breast sitting in the shelves or maybe sitting on the deli you don't know when they cut it maybe they cut it that morning maybe it was three days ago maybe it was a week ago but you can guarantee that it's not gonna be as fresh as a chicken that you cut right there finally being exposed to the air the moment when you cut it. So for me to make yakitori and for anyone out there who wants to make good yakitori, just start with a whole chicken. Uh, I know some of you guys want to start practicing on a thigh, but if you just start with the whole chicken, it's just going to taste better. If it tastes better, making yakitori is going to be more fun. So you're going to continue making that yakitori. So it's always just good practice and just tastes better and economical to just start with the whole chicken. So to break down a whole chicken, I do have some tools or equipment here that's just gonna help me out in the process. Again, right here, you see that it's on a cutting board. This is a plastic cutting board, much larger than the size of the chicken. It really helps to have somewhat of a larger cutting board so you have room to work with. When it's a smaller cutting board, you know, you don't really have much room to work with. So a larger size is nice. I love using plastic because I know that any of these chicken juices, I can clean it right off. If a wooden one is all you have, that's fine. But keep in mind that all those chicken juices, it's gonna soak through that wood. So if you can get the plastic larger one, this one I bought from a restaurant supply shop. Another useful item for me in the kitchen is just some sort of container. This is a restaurant style Cambro container, but you can use Tupperware, some glass containers, metal container, whatever you have, as long as you can put saran wrap or seal it. Just helps as you're breaking down a chicken to put all the parts in here and put it in the fridge. Because if I'm cutting through a lot of chicken, I don't need all the chicken parts. So whatever I'm not using, the parts that I'm not skewering for yakitori, I want to keep it cold. It's always important to keep chicken cold. Just keeps its freshness, just for safety reasons and for flavor reasons. Keeping the chicken cold in the fridge is gonna be very helpful. Another thing I have here, this is just a metal soup or stock pot. Any of the discarded bones or carcass in here, as well as maybe some tendons or cartilages that I'm not gonna make skewers with, they'll go in here. And especially in yakitori making, nothing goes to waste. I just have this soup pot here to collect all the parts that I don't need and make soup after. Another thing that's important, I have towels on hand. So this is basically just a wrap to wipe my hands. This helps me keep maybe my knife it might get slippery from the chicken or maybe this area just might get dirty. It's just nice to have paper towels and rags on hand. I always always use this uh, spray bottle that's filled with rubbing alcohol. It just helps me sterilize the area, sterilize my hand as I need. It's very important to just keep the area clean. And most important for the chicken cutting or breakdown is gonna be the knife. The main knife that I use for my day-to-day -day chicken cutting is this is my garaski. Garaski meaning chicken carcass knife. Now the characteristic of a Japanese chicken carcass knife is that it's gonna be flat on one end, angled on a sort of single bevel. There is a sort of a triangular tip at the top. And and the whole point of these uh, get as close as possible to like the bones and cut the, the muscle and separate that from the bones. I have another example of a chicken cutting knife. This one's a little bit shorter, so they call this one Honeski. So the only difference, Garaski Honeski is just essentially the length. I'm used to this Garaski because this is the first chicken knife I started with, but right now I have a few other chicken knives and sometimes I just change it up just to get a different feel. But for you guys at home, definitely you don't need to go out and buy a chicken knife, a Japanese chicken knife right away. You can start with whatever kitchen knives you guys had at home. Actually, when I first started doing yakitori, probably for like the first month, I was using this knife. You can use any knife as long as you sharpen it, you're gonna be able to use this. Breaking down a chicken, one thing that I want everyone to visualize is we're not gonna be cutting through any bones. We're not butchering blocks of chicken parts. It's more of a finesse. We're just cutting the soft parts. We're using the sharpness of the knife to just cut the soft parts of the chicken. What I mean by soft parts is gonna be the skin. There's membranes, there's tendons and cartilages, all these softer tissues that hold the muscles, the bones together. So we're not using the knife to cut through any bones. That's gonna ruin your knife. But instead, we're gonna be finessing around all the soft areas, breaking the joint to get all the different parts. Clean piece of breast, clean piece of thigh, all of that's gonna be separated because we just separated where the muscles end. 
And saying that, I discovered that anywhere where the muscle ends and the bone starts or the muscle ends and another muscle starts, the chickens kind of give you a natural cheat line or guideline to help guide you through this breakdown process. So for example, where this drum and thigh ends and the breast starts right here, that's just anywhere where muscle doesn't exist, fat's gonna accumulate. Just like on our bellies, if I drink too much beer, I'm just gonna have a little bit of, you know, softer parts. Same thing with the chickens, anywhere that it's not muscle, there's these white sort of lines. And basically I'm gonna be using my knives to cut through that line. So when you're thinking about breaking down a chicken, it's essentially just cutting through where muscle doesn't exist. Let's go into the process of cutting this chicken. All right, so when you first get these chickens, sometimes, especially if they come packaged like in a plastic wrap, they're gonna be pretty wet. And that's just the chicken juices that have come out. Those are old chicken juices. We wanna wipe all that off using paper towel. Get that chicken really nice and dry. Make sure you get under the armpits, in between all the legs, joints. The reason for this wiping is we are essentially getting off all the old juices that came out of the chicken. So it's just really bad flavors that we want to just wipe off as well as it's just for the safety of handling the chicken so imagine if this is still wet and slippery and i'm trying to cut it it might slip out of my hand and if i have my knife and my knife slips that can be very dangerous so for right now we just want to wipe these chickens down as much as possible every crevice that we can find and also it's very important to wipe the inside as well so stick that in there roll off if you want to just use another paper towel make sure everything is completely dry it makes it so much easier to handle when it's not slippery that is done, wiped. Start with the cutting. I always start with for here. This is basically the chicken tail. Just use a knife and slice right through. Now, if you hit the bone, which there is a bone, if your knife is sharp enough, you can cut it right through. But if not, I recommend just cutting it. And then if you just twist it off, tail. Now the next spot right here, what I explained earlier, anywhere where the muscle ends and bone starts or muscle ends and muscle starts, you're always gonna just see these white lines right here. Right, that's the white line, another white line here. So what we're doing when the breaking down a chicken, we're gonna follow these white lines in all the parts of the body. Like even right here where the wing ends, there's a white line cutting right here. So it's just making an incision on that white line. You see what happens is this is just skin that's holding it together. If I hold this up, you can just see that skin is the only thing that is holding basically all the muscles together. And then there's some membrane right here. So once we cut off the skin, back of here, there's a bone right here. There's a socket where the joint is. If you put your thumb, you should be able to now push it right out right here. So this is socket. You need the same thing on this side. You just use your knife and just slowly cut and just start separating with your hands. Now, if you wanna go fast, basically you cut, cut, and you break it this way, but for the purpose of this demo, I wanted to just show you guys slowly, where as I said, right here, if you move the legs, you're gonna feel this joint right here. So pop out the joint. So once this is popped, we wanna take this thigh meat off of the body. I wanted to show you, so this is the drum, thigh, right here. So this is the oysters. So this round muscle right here. So we wanna get these oysters out too. So the way I cut the chicken so I can get the oysters out, I start from the back end. You see where the thigh, this is all thigh muscle. I'm gonna be cutting with my knife, just carving across. And then there's a point where I'm gonna hit a harder area. This isn't bone. This is cartilage right here, or the socket. Once I get to here, and this is where the oyster is, I'm gonna use the tip of my knife and carve it in. If I carve it a little, now this is the oyster. Should be able to pull right off. So that was the oyster. This is the socket right here. And then use your knife and cut the skin. So there is the leg. We'll do it on the other side as well. You spread it out, you can see the thigh. This is basically where the body is. So I'm gonna use a knife, cut right through. And then you heard that snap, that's just cutting through basically this socket, this cartilage, this soft area. Now, this is the oyster. I'm gonna use the knife to essentially carve it out. But once I carve out half of it, now I should be able to pull it right out. So that's the oyster and cut the skin off. And there we go. We have the second leg right here. This is another part that I like. This is the butt skin, very spongy fatty. So it cooks up nice and crispy. Using a knife and just carve along the bone and just pull off that skin. The butt skin, as you can see, it's very fat right here. Belly skin, belly skin right here. Right here though, this whole membrane area, this is belly meat, hara meat right here. Cutting just right where the membrane ends and touch the bone, as well as on the top. So right here, it's gonna be a little bit triangular piece of the belly skin and the belly 
meat. Same thing on the other end. Slice off where the membrane ends. So right here, harami, the belly. This is all a breast skin. It's gonna use your fingers and there's membranes holding the skin onto the breast, but as long as you use your finger and pull it, it's gonna pull off, kind of like taking a sweater off. Sweater off the chicken. There's a lot of these membranes holding it together. Just rip that off. Once you get up to the top, there's also some neck skin right here. We're gonna now just use a knife and just carve it right off. This is breast skin. Just fold that for now. Now my hands are a little bit wet. It's just from all the fat to the chicken fat, so always make sure to dry your hands. So next stop, I wanna get basically the breasts and the wings off. Wherever the muscle ends, the bones start, another muscle start, you're gonna see just these white lines. So we're gonna be cutting across this white line, as well as here, this is where the, the wing, the joint ends and connects to the back. I'm gonna cut right where the wing, the shoulder ends. If I cut right in here, it, it's gonna expose basically this uh, joint area. So once that exposes, so I'm gonna ignore that for now and cut all the way down the breast. So follow that white line. Then now I'm gonna come across back to where that joint was and inside here, you're gonna see lots of tendons, stringy stuff that's holding basically the wing to the body. Using the tip of that knife, I'm just gonna cut those tendons off. Then, if you open it up, you can see where the shoulder joint is to the body. So using my tip of the knife and then just cutting it across. Right here, as I cut, this is the wishbone of the chicken. So I'm gonna be carving across the wishbone uh, to the top of the wishbone. Assuming everything is already peeled off, I can use this wing pull this right off. So this wing and the breast comes right off. Slice right through, so we got wing and the breast. So we're gonna do that with the other side where you see this fat is. This is like a good guideline. I'm gonna cut into there, all the way across down, across the breast, come back around. And then you're gonna see all this tendons holding in place. Cut right through there, there's a socket. And then right here, there's a wishbone across the chest. Come across, just using the tip of the knife. Then using basically holding onto the wing. If you pull back, the breast will come right off. Here, this is the wing, one wing, one breast. Now, next up, we wanna take off either the chicken tender. So the chicken tender is right underneath the breast. It's the opposite muscles to the breast. For me to take that off, I'm gonna be using the tip of the knife and carve in between the chicken tender, carve across all the way to the bottom. And on top, I'm gonna carve it across, but I don't carve it all the way across. I actually start halfway through. So that way, I can stick my thumb through. There's the stringy stuff. So this is basically the chicken tendons of the tenders. I'm gonna grab that. Kind of slippery, so I'm gonna use a paper towel. If I pull down on it, tenders fall right off. And the reason why I didn't cut all the way across, there's a membrane on top. And if I cut it all the way across, that membrane will stick onto the chicken tenders. If I only cut it right here, this sticks onto the top. So little trick that I learned. Same thing here, so don't cut all the way across. Just halfway down, so leave this whole membrane on there. On the bottom though, we are gonna cut all the way across. And then, stick your hands in, pull out that string on the top. Use a paper towel so you can grab it a little bit easier. And then, just slide right off with the membranes still on here. I still have some few parts that I wanna grab. Right here, this is called the chest cartilage. This is hard bone right here, but right here is very soft, so I was able to put my knife right through there. and just. Pull that right off, chest cartilage. Here, a little bit of this thigh, sort of butt area meat that I left. It's a little bit cartilage-y, so I like this because it's nice and crunchy, so I'm gonna take that off right here. Essentially, we're done in the sense that we got the drumsticks and the thighs, we got two wings, we got the two breasts, and the tenders. So those are usually the parts that they sell at the grocery stores individually, but in a few minutes, you can get all these parts to use for any of your recipes. So moving on forward though, I'm just trying to grab extra pieces that I wanna use for yakitori. So this is sort of the, the chicken butt area thigh meat. Grab that from the other side, slide that off. Right here, I wanna grab the shoulder back area skin. Peel that off, this is neck skin. Just gonna rip that off, so this is neck and shoulder area skin. Right here, this is shoulder meat right here, so furisode. So I'm gonna be using my knife to slide across that. So this is like the shoulder blade, so I'm using my knife to just slide across. I got that one shoulder meat right here. Right here, we're gonna get the second shoulder meat bone right here, so we're just gonna slide it across. Get that second shoulder loin. Now lastly, I wanna get this neck meat. So in order for me to get this neck meat, I'm gonna take apart the back from the chest area by 
cutting across the shoulder blade with the tip of my knife. That way I can rip basically the chest rib cage. And now I just have this spinal area. It's a pretty long neck right here. So I want to get as much as that meat off of it. I like to pinch it together so I can get more meat off of it. So I'm going to start cutting a bit right here. And once I start it, I'm going to then cut side to side and then get as much meat of, off of it as possible. So you're using a knife and carving side to side. Now, you could also, if you want, just go straight this way, but then you're gonna really lose on some of these side meat. So even if you have to take your time to cut it side to side, get as much as that meat possible from the side. So you're basically cutting the sides as well as I'm using this other hand to pull apart the neck meat away from the bone. And then be very careful when cutting this. So you don't cut your hands. Okay, so I got one top of the neck meat off right here. Now I'm gonna go to the other side. There's a little bit less neck meat, but I'm gonna try to get this part as well. So just start it off slowly, just Carve side to side as you pull this off. This side has definitely less meat than the front, but with yakitori, you want to use every part of the chicken. So I'm just trying to grab as much meat as possible. So this is just neck meat. I'm just trying to grab off. Got as much as we can. Here we have basically every part of the chicken broken down. So we have two chicken breasts, two tenders, two drumsticks, two thighs, two wings, the chicken tail, the chest cartilage, the breast skin. We have belly skin, belly meat, butt skin, shoulder skin with the neck skin. We have butt diarrhea, the shoulder meat, and neck meat right here, and the carcass. So this will go into soup. And all these other parts, I'll be putting them away. Cut these further and make this into yakitori. So, but for now, hopefully you guys had a good lesson today on breaking down a whole chicken, whether it's to make yakitori or whether to make any other dishes. Find a chicken, a whole chicken out there and, and start practicing. And don't worry if the cuts are really hard to do or they don't look even. Practice makes perfect. It took me a while uh, and I'm still learning. So that's why I wanted to teach you guys to have a point to start and hopefully this will get you on a path to become much more skilled in the kitchen. Whether you're making yakitori or any food, it's nice to be able to work with good ingredients and a whole chicken is gonna be much more fresher than buying the individual parts. So feel free to comment, ask me any questions. Don't forget to subscribe. Love to help answer any question you guys have about any of this process. All right, thank you very much and I'll see you guys next week.